is Timo Stollenberg, and um, this is Philip Bauer. And we will talk about um, building next generation Plon site with uh, Plon up content types. So first, let's talk about a bit uh, about our rusty old friend archetypes. Archetypes has been around uh, like personally for me forever because I, I joined like Plone, the Plone community in 2004, I think, with, with Plone 2.0. And um, 80 content types were introduced into uh, Plone 2.1. Um, so uh, that's yeah nine, nine years uh, now, and so for for like technology, that's that's uh, a lot of time. Um, and a lot of things happened since then, right? We had like um, big changes in our uh, in our stack, like the introduction of um, uh, ZOP3, the ZOP component architecture, um, ZCC form, ZOP schema, and all things like that. And when Archetype was built, um, not, none of these technologies existed. So um, Archetypes and AT content types um, were using technologies that, that we don't really use these days anymore, uh, which leads to like in comparison to recent technologies, to, to a lot of boilerplate code and a lot of code that's not uh, necessary. Uh, over time, we made archetypes and AT content types um, extensible and everything, so we can work with them. But it was never like really a um, yeah fresh start. Um, then there was the Plone Conference uh, 2012 in San Francisco. Um, Dexterity, the new archetypes successor uh, was around since a couple of years and lots of um, developers and companies were already building most of their stuff in, in dexterity um, so the problem was that that if you built your if you use dexterity in in a plone say 3.3 site um, then you have like a mixture of archetypes and dexterity types uh, and what we wanted is is we wanted to have all these goodies, all this nice new technology that is, that is nice to work with um, in our sites and as default content types. So we, we thought about like um, not reinventing the wheel, everybody, because like usually if, as an integrator, if you, um, if you need like a folder or a page in your site and you just created it uh, over and over again and everybody was doing that. So that's not really the way open source communities um, should work. So um, our idea was to create a set of um, dexterity-based default content types um, for Plone. Um, so during the sprint, we created uh, Plone up content types. Um, the basic idea was that it should be uh, um, an exact or one-to-one -one replacement um, for AT content types for the default content types that are there in Plow, you should have like the same experience uh, if you install Plone. It should like look the same, it should have the, the same functionality and everything, but under the hood um, with a lot more flexibility um, and some extra features that, that we will show. So um, most of the things that we that we show here and most of the functionalities of Plone Up content types is actually um, functionality of dexterity. So uh, we let other people do the really hard work, like Martina Spelli or David Glick, they and others. They worked on uh, on dexterity, and we just came along later and and built like that on top of it, which was in comparison probably pretty easy. Um, but if you have like um, Dexterity or Plone Up content types is a lot more developer friendly um, than archetypes used to be, uh, because it was like uh, a fresh start. It has uh, less boilerplate code than, than archetypes, so it's easier to develop. It was uh, very well documented right from the beginning. Um, archetypes had at the end also pretty decent um, documentation, um, but the documentation of um, of dexterity was pretty good from the beginning. Um, we also um, uh, uh, Dexterity also uses uh, recent technologies like ZOP interface, ZOP schema, like the ZOP component architecture, while, um, while archetypes use AT schema. Um, the, the fields and widgets um, differ. Um, Dexterity uses C3 form. Um, so uh, everything that, that in the last years um, came, came new into the, the community, which you could use, new technologies that you can use, um, developers are now able to, to use them in Dexterity as well and in AT content types. Um, 
dexterity uh, or AT co um, blown up content types um, are extendable. Um, dexter um, <laughs> uh, archetypes were extendable at some point um, too, or are extendable with archetype schema extender. But it was always something that was like uh, put on from like from the outside, and it was a bit hacky uh, and a bit slow. And um, the ex the extendability was uh, built into plot up content types or dexterity right away. So it's so it's a lot easier for a dexterity type to overwrite, for instance, the add form or the edit form. In archetype, it was always a bit hacky. Um, Clone up content types is also a lot more management friendly. Um, we had always this idea of um, allowing users um, to create their content types through the web. Say, if you want to build a uh, a website for a conference and you need a, you need a track or a talk type, then it should be as easy as just going to your clone site and just clicking together the uh, uh, the fields of your of your content type and then just click save and you're done. That was always the idea. What we tried to, um, during the, the time of, of archetypes, we tried to somehow solve that with uh, Archgen XML, where you could have like uh, a graphic definition, more or less, of, uh, of a content type, and then you could export it and then import it into Plone. Um, but that never really worked like a round trip, and it wasn't, wasn't really something that was so easy to use. Um, so, uh, yeah, and plot up content types, all that, what we had in, had in mind for, for archetypes um, is possible. We can um, create content type through the web. We have uh, a very uh, flexible um, system of, that's called behavior that allows you to reuse certain components. If you, have, like, if you create an archetype um, add-on, for instance, you always had like, to create a content type, which was hard to migrate and everything. So usually those add-on packages died more or less, and dexterity and plot-up content types allow you to, to, uh, to have um, sets of functionality that can easy, easily be adapted to existing um, types. So that's a lot more flexible. Um, we will do a short screencast of plot up content types out. Um, this is a Plone 4.3 site uh, with just blown up content types installed. If you want the if you want up content types, you choose the dexterity based Plone default types. And just click on create plone site. Here you see you have like the same uh, user experience and the same content objects that you have in AT content types. Um, you can just go and add a page just like you used to. Um, you have the same form um, for a page for instance where you can add content and then you can... Yeah, you see that, that you, we have the same field set so it's really the same functionality that you have in uh, with with a default blown four or three sites, you can't tell the difference um, from the outside. Yeah, you have actions, you have workflow, everything um, that you know. So no functionality is really missing. Um, now we come to additional functionality that blown up content types gives you. You can um, change the existing content types. Like there, you have a list of all existing content types. Um, not sure if I can. Ah, I can stop that. Okay, I will. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a bit boring now. Um, yeah, one, one thing that, that we discovered uh, recently is that we have um, the, the current version of Plone App um, content types has a problem um, that the, the content that you see here that, that a Plone site generates when you install it, you have the default content. Um, this is actually what you see there are still archetype objects. So if you install Plone Up Content Types for the first time, you will have content that you need to migrate, so you have to migrate step. Um, but we'll fix that um, during the sprint, um, and then it will be um, um, uh, will be dexterity based. Um, so, uh, but but this is not really breaking anything. You can just remove it for now, and then you're good. Um, but for like, if you install it for the first time, that that sucks a bit because you install it, you go to the front page, click on edit, and then it seems to be broken. So um, yeah, here we are. So you can, um, you can uh, um, edit 
the page object through the web, you see there all the all the fields that we have, like the text fields, um, the settings, the field set. Um, and what we are going to do, we are going to extend that type with a new field by going by clicking on this add new field. So we can give this field a title. Uh, we'll add a new date, so we choose a date as a file type. And if we scroll down, we see here there's this new date type, and we can uh, reorder those field set if we want. Um, so this is stored immediately. And without having to restart um, the Plone instance or anything, we can go to the existing uh, page that we have created before, and there's the date field. So we can really add, this, uh, add and edit um, uh, schema fields. So now we can add a date. Um, and if we say remove a field, then it will just not show up. Um, so yeah, this, this was, a, was a date field, so we can add arbitrary fields. Um, another thing that makes Dexterity really flexible is um, behaviors. Behaviors are a set of um, functionality or fields. Um, all the default functionality, like allow discussion, the basic metadata, uh, Dublin core, uh, and things like this are uh, behaviors now, and we create a new behavior that's um, a lead image behavior that allows you to add a lead image to a um, content um, type, and I just and we added that there, and you see them show show them up there, and the uh, the type actually has um, the the behavior actually has two two fields. So we added that, and um, the the cool thing about that is that you can just um, enable and disable those behaviors um, as as you want through the web without changing anything, without restarting the instance. Uh, that gives you a lot of flexibility. If you, um, if you build any functionality, usually what, what I do and a lot of other people do these days is uh, building a behavior, even though it's only for one, one content object. Because you never know if you got an, uh, another content object and you want the same behavior, the same functionality, then it's really easy to adapt that to another content object if you want to. And if you, if you create an add-on product, uh, and you have a behavior, then everybody can just take that behavior and use it for their content types, which is really, really flexible and will lead to, uh, to uh, a, a lot more flexible add-on products and everything. That was the uh, first part of our talk, and Philip will now uh, tell you about um, add-ons, migrations, and all the other cool stuff. All the other cool stuff. Thank you, Timo. Um, so there's a lot of functionality that is already built into Plone since we were all little kids. And you'd expect them to work in Dexterity 2, and they actually do. Uh, relations for one, and uh, they're working from archetypes to Dexterity and de Dexterity to archetypes. So that is actually all of, most of these features were not written by us or anyone in the Plone App uh, Content Types project, but these are other projects that were merged into uh, this effort. Uh, what you also expect to have uh, work is versioning, and it does. You'd expect multilingual uh, pr functionality, and uh, thanks to Ramon and the uh, effort of Plone App Multilingual, that also, also does. And it works with archetypes and uh, dexterity and archetypes, so that should be the successor for Lingua Plone, which only does archetypes. Uh, the event type has been merged into uh, Plone Up content types. There is a pull request uh, that's also not done by us, but it's uh, you know the f effort of the no Plone Up event thing with the recurrent events. That is a never-ending story, and it was uh, mostly done um, by Hannes. Yes. Um, the collection, same project by Timo. I think you did this uh, during the Summer of Code. Uh, this also merged, merged into Plone App content types. So this uh, project is actually sucking in a lot of functionality that also already exists. And altogether, that if these different efforts are merging into one combined push towards improving Plone, and these, all these things are going to be default in Plone 5. That's actually that's what we hope. Uh, there's no master plan behind this, so we didn't sit together for three, three years ago and think, hey, we need this uh, project and this project and this project, and three years later we're going to merge them all into one, and uh, everybody will think we did this as a plan. Actually, that's just uh, the normal uh, 
happening in the Plum community because we talk a lot to each other during sprints, during conferences, and one guy has a good idea, another guy has another good idea, and say, okay, it's, why shouldn't we make this, these two ideas work with each, which, with each other? Uh, there was a lot of discussion why PlonApp event should not merge into PlonApp content types, but well, now it did. So uh, another very important uh, feature, uh, I want to take this out uh, specifically because during the screencast, if you looked correct, uh, it's, if you really looked well, you might have realized that some of the widgets were not exactly as the widgets in archetypes. They were actually quite inferior, especially the tagging widget is basically a lines widget and nothing else. There's no beautiful functionality as we have in the tagging widget in Plone uh, with archetypes at the moment. But this is uh, uh, all going to be fixed by Plone app widgets. And if you really want to uh, use uh, Plone app content types and dexterity with the full user uh, happiness uh, guarantee, you're supposed to use Plone app widgets with it. That's going to be a release out during this sprint. Rock, am I right? Yeah. Thank you. And that is thanks to Rock. <clears throat> they work in the toolbar and without the toolbar. That's a cool thing. One of the cool things. So uh, there's actually many other Z3C form, which you might wonder why that we need new widgets. These have a, this is a different technology than the archetypes ones. Um, and there's a lot of others that you might use. There's actually a data grid field widget uh, for Z3C forms, and uh, Plone form will have Plone app widgets, but you can pull in all the other widgets that exist for Z3C forms if for your content types. Um, most of the add ons that already exist work without any change. Uh, for example, Plone form gen, since archetypes and dexterity work pretty well next to each other, they don't communicate, uh, they don't, uh, they coexist nicely, so it says. Uh, there's no need for anything to change unless um, Steve wants to rewrite uh, Plone up uh, uh, the. David wants to do that? <laughs> no. We're, we've been plotting. You've been plotting, okay. But there's no, like, no, no s sudden need. It works. A lot of these add-ons, they just work. They coexist nicely with Plone app content types. Uh, they work with them. Uh, others uh, are working in new releases that came out like in the last one and a, or one or two years. Uh, they have to be up. They had to be updated. Like Tiny MCE, you upload a new uh, image or a file. It has to be a dexterity type. Uh, Plone True Gallery, uh, Sojima Full Calendar, EEA Facet Navigation. All these have been updated, and many, 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 many more. Uh, but some have not been updated. I'm not going to mention any names. But Please, if you use an, uh, an add-on that is n still not compatible with uh, dexterity and Plone app content types, you are not compatible with the future of Plone because this is going to be the default content story in Plone 5. So you need to do that. If you have problems, just talk to us. We're not going to do it for you, but we might help you. We'll do a sprint together, something like that. Um, and some add-ons actually are absolutely, oops, completely wrong. How can I scroll here? Yes, perfect. Uh, some add-ons are unusable. Uh, for example, um, how's it called? Content lead image. If you try to install it, it's going to fail because the content types that it tries to extend are no longer there. And there are several add-ons that use schema extender do, and they expect content types uh, from AT content types to be there. These won't work with this and we'll need to a, make sure that uh, these are replaced with something better uh, or obsolete, like content lead image. There's no need for this anymore because we have the lead image behavior and it's in a viewlet. You can put it everywhere. You have Diazo. Uh, so, but there might be a pain point for some people who rely on add-ons that provide functionality uh, that expects AT content types to be there. Uh, the types from AT content types. AT content types actually is going to be there, but the types are not going to be there. Um, so check if your add-ons are failing and do that at an early time because otherwise we're going to have 
a lot of work when we moved to Plone 5. So if you think, uh, this is cool, I'm going to use this in some new site I'm going to do, so clean slate and going to try this out, you might want to think again because you can also use it in existing projects. We have a working migration story and it actually migrates all the default types that come with AT content types and you can with one click, migrate your whole site, even really huge sites. They did tests during the uh, Wine and Beer Sprint in Munich with several gigabytes of data and migrated them to uh, blown up content types, and it worked pretty well. But still, that needs a little love from the user interface point of view and from the installation point of view. Like if you upgrade to Plone 5 from Plone 4, what should happen? Like, should it be auto-migrated? You need a warning message if your types are schema extended. By the way, uh, the file and image content type of AT content types are by default schema extended to add the blob functionality. So there was, there is some work to be done there at some time. Uh, but you should use it now in current projects and you should try to migrate uh, websites. M maybe not live on the server, you might get error messages and then everything will be broken, but you should try that. There are some uh, things you'll have to take care of when migrating. First is migrate multilingual first, that's also in the documentation. Uh, how to migrate the multilingual, you have to check the pull-on up multilingual uh, site. So first multilingual, then the content types themselves. Uh, if your types are schema extended, I already have said this. If you patch types, which actually happens quite a lot, lot if you have monkey patches, these are going to fail for sure, I guess. Uh, and we're currently not migrating the history of the content. So CMF editions, uh, the, the history of the content type will be lost at that point. Uh, I don't know, maybe someone wants to fix this. I don't think that's really very important because if you move from one content type to another, that's like the, that's the extra mile. We might not go, maybe we want to. Um, you might be asking yourself, where the heck is that story that these people, not me, uh, talked about like two or three years ago? Where's the content type to rule them all? When I went to Limi in San Francisco and taught the, told them about the Planet Content Types project that we wanted to start during the sprint, he said, yeah, it's nice, but it's never going to be in the core because we're going to be the one content type to rule them all. And I really wanted it, but I didn't get it so far. So as far as I know, maybe you can correct me and someone else might be more knowledgeable about this, Deco is not coming in Plone 5. And we have, yeah, we have collective cover and we have tiles and they are working, tiles are part of Plone. Uh, but maybe someone else could talk about this. Uh, I think uh, for the foreseeable future, there's not going to be the one content type to rule them all. And we're going to be stuck with the uh, Plone App content types approach that mm, might be dated in the way like we have five different content types and you choose from it, but you can't add stuff. Actually, now you can with behaviors, you can add, add stuff pretty easily. And uh, there is still effort going on with the add with the tiles project to add uh, new elements to a page and there is again collective cover. So that might be open to discussion. Uh, as I said, it's going to be default in Plone 5. Archetypes and AT content types will still be shipped with Plone 5, but AT content types will be a soft dependency. So if you rip it out, nobody, nothing by default breaks. That's uh, all thanks to David, by the way. Uh, we just said, we, we don't want this anymore, and David just did it. Um, and yeah. And archetypes, that's the hard dependency. This will, I don't know, maybe Plone 6, I don't know. Someone else should talk about this. So, but why you, what you should do is try Plone up content types, migrate your sites, test them, not on the server again, and sprint with us. We're all, uh, we're all going to Schwan Pessoa, and uh, you're coming with us. And maybe you can help us, for example, improve the migration form, which is like, at the moment, it's just a view that you can call. There is a form that actually works, but it doesn't give any feedback. So that needs some love before it will make it into um, any, 
useful version. If you want to uh, kickstart your Plone app content types experience, you just have to install it. There's one depend. We have had a new release uh, two or three days ago, and we're gonna have another one with the Plone app event uh, integrated uh, during the sprint or before the sprint. Yeah, during the sprint. Um, but we still need one version pin Plone app layout two three nine. Uh, but that's all. Just try it. Give it a try. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And we are willing to answer your questions. Guido. There was actually a, a re not a release, but a, a project that was put on GitHub, uh, not GitHub, uh, yes, GitHub, a few days ago. How's it called? Blah, 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 instant behavior, instance behaviors. Who, who did this? David? No. So this that is done in that project. Who, who did that? Who is it? Chris? JC, yeah. JC's not here, sorry. He did that and he stores the, uh, the stuff uh, on uh, annotations on the instances. And uh, it might need some love, but the idea is there. You just need to, as David pointed out, uh, tell people what is instance behaviorable and what not. But that is extremely powerful, and that's like the sky's wide open there. Paul, uh, I you guess, want the mic? Uh, the template changes will only come later. Uh, will template changes will probably only come later? Um, for instance, if I add the image uh, from a news uh, that currently is on a news item, um, that is an, uh, I could put it on a, on a page as well, but it wouldn't do the whole nice thumbnail thing, uh, not before plan five probably, because then, because yeah, to me a news item always was a page with an image, and that was the only difference, and that would get rid of one. But probably you would have to write new templates for all the overviews and listings and that kind of stuff. Timo, you, you wrote that. <laughs> you fix it. Yeah, I mean, I mean when, when, when we implement the delete image behavior, that was a problem because, as you said, we have a template for news uh, item and news items have an image um, and we wanted to uh, be the lead image to be a view list so it can really show up because, like, as, as you saw, uh, when I added uh, the date field, it did not show up because what you had to do is then to override the template, right? And we don't have a through the web story for overriding templates. So we can either just get rid of all the all the templates and make them flexible with tiles or viewlets or whatever, uh, or we are stuck with that. Or, or, we, or we provide a, a story for through the web uh, templates. Uh, but that hasn't been discussed or anything yet. So. Uh, what you'd usually do is you uh, connect a behavior. If you write a beha you write a behavior and then apply it, and you attach a viewlet, for example, to that behavior. That's what happens with the uh, lead image, uh, and then you can move that viewlet at wherever you want it to be. But uh, the through the web story for templates is not there. Some genius, maybe. Uh, what is the current status of uh, collections migration? Good question. Uh, we we talked about this uh, yesterday, and it, Timo said he'll have to check out if there is one. I mean, the, the, the problem with collection is that that it became over the time pretty complex, right? Because like there were like the the, the really old collection, then there was blown up collection ba based on our archetypes. Then I created for a client uh, a blown up collection version that that uses um, dexterity. Then we then after that we came up with blown up content types and then it was kind of silly to have a blown up collection um, and blown up content types and it was impossible even because uh, we had two packages that were called blown up content types, one for archetypes, one for dexterity and we can't ship both at the same time, right? So we had to uh, to um, uh, integrate 
the dexterity blown up content uh, blown up collection into blown up content types um, and this means that there are a lot of migration possible migration path right and we haven't really checked yet if all the paths work because like so far people worked on the migrations only if they had a certain need so um, we need people to to start using it and telling us uh, writing bug reports and telling us what is what is missing and if if people can help with writing migrations um, that would be pretty cool because like we have so many path path is, uh, we, have, we have even old version of blown up content types that, that had a different structure so uh, we probably can't write migrations for really everything um, but if you if you have like we put out the RC like two weeks ago or something and there will be the final 1.0 release um, and from there it's pretty safe we will provide upgrade steps for everything um, so um, yeah it's, it's from our view, it's, it's stable and you can use it and you can be pretty sure that, that upgrade steps from, from here will be provided and everything that was before, uh, we have to see. There, there is, uh, if you want to write, writing your own migration is pretty easy. There is good code in Plonup content types that you can just copy and paste and uh, learn from how to do that. Uh, there's actually also a migration for the news item that uses a blob image for the news I uh, for the image. That's just a plip somewhere. I saw it, and I just it's just one line of code to change. Uh, also support this. So if you have a content type and use uh, you extended it with a schema extender, it's really easy to write a migration yourself. But like a customer wouldn't really be able to do that. He'd need, he'd need to uh, need a, a developer. Any more questions? Yes, Dylan. Um, so I, I haven't sort of tried using the the new dictionary content types, but my understanding is that um, if you if you want it to work through the web, you've got to start with the XML version. You you can't sort of go backwards and forwards between XML versus the Python version. Is that still the case? Uh, Plonup content types has XML schemata, and only this way they're still editable through the web. Otherwise, the editability would have been gone. Uh, that is, since the supermodel uh, package has been so greatly improved, that's not a pain point for us. Just to, 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 to address a myth on that, there is really nothing that you can do writing schema in Python that you can't do through Supermodel these days. And if you prove me wrong, we'll fix it. Because Supermo Supermodel will cover everything that you could write in schema, and there's re no reason not. So don't, don't think that you have to get down and write it all in Python. You can write all your supporting code, your validators, your defaults, that you do that in Python, but you can still be working with Supermodel XML to, and going through the web to uh, set up your content types. David, would you say that's accurate? David, were you paying attention at that moment? <laughs> that's okay. Steve, challenge accepted. I, I found a, a corner case in Supermodel and I tried a pull request to these guys and they were kind of, what the fuck? And so we talk later on. It's easy, fixable, but in any case, I have a question for you, sir. Uh, the news item and the document and other content types are based on item instead of container. Are we going to change this at any point in order to add stuff under it? Yes, Timo, that is definitely your point. <laughs> yeah, so, so personally, I, I don't have a strong opinion on that. Uh, I know that there were a couple of people um, um, that, they, that they wanted folderish types. Um, so what our position basically was, was that um, if, if we can have the same UI, the same functionality, we're good with using container. The last thing that I heard from Nathan and, and UI team and everything was that um, there's certain problems that you run into from a UI point of view that are not easily be uh, that can't be fixed easily. So um, I know that Nathan worked on that. I'm not sure what's the status of that. If there would be a, is there, if there are support requests, 
and okay, the framework team has to approve that now because it ha has been merged already, but we're not against it. Um, we, we could do this at any time, um, but I think there are, there are UI issues um, with that. I, ha I had the, the same, I had, I had one set I had with collections, I had a problem um, with, ne we, we um, at some point we uh, removed uh, the possibility for nested collections. And I needed that for a client project. And I, I wrote an email to the developer mailing list and, and I think then Gear answered and he said that they, bas they basically removed it because they had like the, those UI problems that they could not solve. Um, like because you have a, like a lot of complexity in there, you have like the default views and everything and that there are like corner cases that are really hard to solve. And um, yeah, if somebody wants to work on that and wants it really uh, we, we would be open for it, but we will not, personally, we will not work on that, I guess. I have an opinion, actually. I'm, I'm for it. Uh, because uh, the default, if you add a new dexterity type, now it is folderish by default, and so it would break user expectations if the other defo the default types you get chipped the clone would not be folderish. Uh, but there needs to be migration, and there are some UI issues. Um, me and Nathan were working on this, and it's not possible because of the setting an item as a default. Because then, if you set a folderish item as a default item, which is a folderish one, and then a folderish, well, you know the story. So, um, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Solve it, and you can have it. That's a challenge for you. Um, yeah, just to go on that a little bit more, the the UI team, we did the uh, the UX hit list and and the the whole thing around uh, default pages and 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 you know whether things are folders. It sort of came up in a number of different items. So there's even without um, folders uh, items being folderish, there's confusion already around you know like when you're editing something with a default type are you publish it are you publishing the folder are you publishing the item are you editing the folder are you are editing the item and it's something that um, there's a solution in there somewhere and uh, it may not be making folderish items have bodies which is something that people kind of start to get to when they're talking about making everything folderish it's like you know when, why don't we just have one type then we get rid of folders we just have items that are folderish and then you run into other problems so it's something that um, I w would love to sprint on maybe we're not making code maybe we're just having lots of discussions maybe we're doing mock-ups and and sort of um, working through different things. Um, maybe there's a few tweaks in the UI to make it, uh, we're doing less of the merging between folders and stuff. We're making it obvious what you're working on, something like that. Um, so anyone who's really interested in, in improving the UI and has ideas in this regard, then um, Saturday, come and sprint in the UI sprint. So. Any more? Enrico, come on. Just a comment, the new brazil.gov.br uses Plone app content type and we are quite happy. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Uh, do migrations do magically keep the reference fields from archetypes? Okay. Not magically. <laughs> <laughs> He wrote that. That was really good. And actually, uh, the the hard part was keeping the order of the references. Was, oh my God! And like, just to imagine, you have references to archetypes, content types. Also, these are all also kept. So, but that's kind of difficult because you have to store them somewhere and then pull them magically out again and somehow the UUID has to be like again and uh, there's maybe some pain points still there. Maybe David will all fix that. No. <laughs> but you just raised your hand, didn't you? That was volu voluntary. Did you want to say something? No. He was just yawning. 
Okay, anything else? Good. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>